Thunder! Thunder! Thundercats! Thunder, thunder, thundercats, ho! Oh, that's the rallying cry you'll hear from Lino before he transforms a legendary sword into a powerhouse weapon. Initially designed to take down Mumra and his evil sword, the Sword of Omens became the heart and soul of the Thundercats universe. Needless to say, it is the most potent weapon of the universe and it's only prudent to explore such a magnificent sword. So without further ado, let's explore the origins of the Sword of Omens. Let's begin. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. Forged in Legend, the mythical origins and backstory of the Sword of Omens. Long before his attempt to seize the Warstone, Mumra sought advice from the ancient spirits. The ancient spirits tell Mumra that he'd need a special blade to harness the stone's power, one forged with the blood of a star. But before we move forward, let's quickly find out what exactly the Warstone and the ancient spirits are. So the Warstone was also called the Eye of Pondera, a super powerful weapon source of mystical energy that once powered the particle cannon of an alien civilization. However, Mumra found out about it and wanted to lay his hands on the stone. I'm sure you know who or what exactly the ancient spirits are, even if you don't, I'll help. There are a bunch of ancient spirits, obviously, that hold immense power and le and needless to say, they are evil in nature. Now, the spirits are housed within four cursed and possessed statues that represent four animals, namely monkey, jackal, lizard, and vulture. Additionally, the ancient spirits played an important role in the history of the Swords of Plundar and Omen, but that's not all. The tribe of Tigra, Lino's adoptive brother, once worshipped the ancient swords, but that's a different story altogether. Now, following this advice about the enchanted sword, Mumra orchestrated the destruction of the Plundar star system by creating a black hole from its rune. Amidst the chaos, one of Mumra's probes captured the star's blood, which was basically the ore remains of the system. Back in his ship, Mumra had the ancient Puma blacksmith under his absolute control. How? Well, of course, through some good old ancient spirit enchantment. The Puma blacksmith was asked to mold the ore into the sword of Plundar. Now, this very act of the sword's creation sparked a rebellion amongst Mumra. Mumra's ranks. Observing the sword's immense power, Leo and Panthera, ancient Thundercats, plotted against Mumra. Leo saw the need for a weapon of equal strength to stand a chance against the Sword of Plundar. He retrieved the leftover Plundar ore fragments by tricking the cleanup crew rats into believing it was Mumra's command. Now because the blacksmith had been guided by the ancient spirits into forging the Sword of Plundar, he remembered the process even after being free of Mumra's mind control. With the fragments in hand, Leo enlisted the same blacksmith to forge a new weapon, secretly hoping it could counter the Sword of Plundar's power. So Mumra did have the Sword of Plundar, but he didn't have the War Stone or the Eye of Thundera, so he invaded the planet where the stone was present. Following Mumra's invasion in pursuit of the War Stone, Captain Tegus secured it. This was following the rebellion of Leo and Panthera. They secretly got hold of the newly forged Sword and Gauntlet of Omens. With the War Stone in sight, they were prepared to transform it into the Eye of Thundera by integrating it into the Sword of Omens. Soon enough, the preparations had paid off and now the cats were more than armed for the uprising they had started. The showdown between Mumra and the rebels was epic. Armed with the Sword of Omens, Leo and Panthera launched their revolt and they began liberating the enslaved beasts and then went on to defeat Mumra, who had retreated to his sarcophagus where he was imprisoned. Although victorious, the battle took its toll. In the end, their spaceship took some really heavy damage and crash-landed Third Earth. The aftermath saw the survivors scattered to lay new foundations on Third Earth. The Thundercats established Thundera while the Stones of Power were also dispersed to prevent dominance by any single race. The Thundercats retained the War Stone, now part of the Sword of Omens, but the Gauntlet's power waned as it was separated from the other three stones. The Tech Stone went to the Vultures, the Spirit Stone ended up in the Astral Plane, and the whereabouts of the Cyan Stone remain a mystery to this very day. Despite the measures to check the concentration of power, the Thundercats rose to the top of the dominant force of Third Earth. Now, this could largely be attributed to their possession of the Sword of Omens. Needless to say, the weapon ensured the line's ascendancy over the other clans, with Leo's lineage reigning supreme. The Sword of Omens has been passed down through generations of Thundercats leaders, from Claudus to the latest Lionel. Rattilla fought for the fate of our people, but Charter's magic was too much for him. Rattilla's War and Cursing Plundar now, it wasn't long after the creation of the Sword of Plundar that it became lost for a while, only to be found by Rattilla. 
the Lord of the Rats. Before Attila found the Sword of Plundar, the rats were looked at with utter disdain and had to struggle for as little as survival. But the Rattila found the sword in a swamp and brought his people to glory and power. However, wielding the sword's fearsome power proved to be quite overwhelming and full of temptations for Rattila. He rose to tyranny and marshaled his rat forces to wage war against Thundera. Faced with this villainy and threat, the reigning Cat King, presumably Claudus, entrusted Jaga with the Sword of Omens. As you might know, both Jaga and the Sword of Omens were pretty much the beacons of hope that were dedicated to quelling the dark. The ensuing battle was of course monumental, a clash of titanic force. Jaga, armed with the Sword of Omens and all its magic, ultimately outmatched Rattila. But that's not all. Jaga also recognised the Sword of Plundar's perilous nature and that it was imbued with dark energies no one should harness. Therefore, Jaga cursed it. This was when the land responded by opening to engulf the sword and Mount Plundar was born to serve as the grave for that cursed blade. You are but insects to the power of Plundar! Mumra's return and Lionel's inheritance. For years, Thundera basked in an era of peace under the vigilant watch of the clerics who had safeguarded the Sword of Omens until Prince Lionel came of age. Now, in the Thundercats universe, clerics were basically a super skilled team of magicians who could put the greatest of ninjas to shame. Anyway, Lionel was about to perform a rite of passage to prove his worthiness of the kingdom and the sword itself. Without this rite of passage, he couldn't wield it. Lionel inadvertently triggered the sword sight beyond sight. It forewarned him of Mumra's impending return. I mean, he saw this vision. However, Lionel shrugged off the warning with an excuse when Claudus asked what Lionel had seen. Not only did this leave Claudus disappointed by his son's levity and unprepared but also it caused the devastation of their city. Not long after this, General Groon returned to Thundera after supposedly hunting for the Book of Omens for several years. However, Groon betrayed Thundera by aligning with Mumra's lizard army. During the siege, Groon held General Panthro hostage and Groon dueled King Claudus. Claudus emerged victorious but was then killed by Panthro, who was actually Mumra in disguise. After Claudus was killed, Mumra attempted to seize the sword and gauntlet of omens but was thwarted by ancient magic spells that protected the relics from his touch. In the Aftermath, Lino, Tigra and a rescued Chitara managed to flee. They eventually liberated Jaga and reclaimed the sword and gauntlet of omens. Lino, who was now wielding the sword, stopped Mumra with the power. And he was helped by Mumra's vulnerability to sunlight as well. But Mumra's threat was not yet finished, so just before their escape, Jaga hastily passed leadership to Lino and urged him to seek the Book of Omens. Although grievously injured, Jaga held off their pursuers and ensured that the Thundercats escaped. Sword of Omens, give me sight beyond sight. Lionel's Sword of Omens abilities revealed. The Sword of Omens is far more than just a blade for battle, it's a vault of mystic powers. But you'd be quite surprised to know that the sword was never used by Lionel to draw blood. At least in the original series, it didn't cut through anyone. And if swords are known for one thing, it's cutting through people. However, the show had to remain in compliance with the strict TV rules of the 1980s. Instead, Lionel would leverage its myriad of other abilities to combat evil, often in more creative and non-lethal ways. And we couldn't be happier about this. I believe this is the reason why the Sword of Omens is so awesome as a weapon. So what are the things that this legendary sword can do? At its core, the Sword of Omens is the universe's most powerful weapon, so much so that Mumra would stop at nothing to claim it. Unfortunately, Lino scarcely tapped into the sword's full potential. I guess if our favourite mummy, Mumra, got hold of it, he would have done some awesome and terrible things with it. Not good, but awesome. Lino did, however, do some extraordinary things with the Sword of Omens on notable occasions, like when Thundera's existence hung in the balance. Lionel threw the sword into space to replace a destroyed gyroscope that was holding the planet's core together. Despite its primary function of slashing opponents, the sword's edge was reserved for cutting through inanimate objects like rock and metal. I think it would have made it abundantly clear that this was because the sword's true might rested in a superior blade, whose raw material came from a star. And then there's the Eye of Thundera, which was a sentient jewel that had been embedded in the hilt of sword. So it's safe to say that this living sword discerns the wielder's interactions and chooses to serve only those with the noblest of hearts. The Sword of Omen can intuitively select powers to deploy and even resist unworthy wielders, like Mumra. That's not all though. The Sword of Omens was also like the super ultimate bat signal, as it could project the Thundercat symbol across the sky and summon the team without the need for a cloudy backdrop, which in turn makes it far more reaching as a beacon of hope and unity. That's truly awesome stuff. And to be honest, it's no wonder that it's for these reasons that the entire show sort of revolves around the Sword of Omens and the Eye of Thundera. 
I mean, a weapon of that kind of power deserves to be the centre of every story, right? Anyway, speaking of the story, central plot and soul, we are well aware of Mumra's obsession with Lionel's weapon, and yet he cannot wield the sword's powers, the most important of which seems to be the sight beyond sight. This feature grants Lino psychic-like connections that enable him to surveil distant places, discover hidden objects and foresee impending danger. Adding to this unending list of powers and abilities, the Sword of Omens offers protection by generating impenetrable force fields. So in a way, it's also kind of like a shield. But you haven't even yet heard about the sword's most awesome ability, weather control. From inducing rainfall during droughts to creating thunderstorms and eclipses, the Sword of Omens has the power to alter the environment. And that is that. So yeah, it's pretty ultra cool and uber powerful. The Sword of Omens, there it is. If you're a fan of the sword and the sorcery genre, you found a marvellous place to be. So stick around with marvellous videos and we'll see you in the next video. Thanks so much. Take care. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave us a like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks everyone.